Today we're going to be learning how to set up Tailwind in a Phoenix project. Tailwind CSS has taken the world by storm. It's very popular amongst developers. It's a technology, uh, it's just a CSS library, but it makes it lightning fast to be able to create user interfaces with utility classes. If you're watching this video, you probably already know this, so we're going to keep this short and keep it moving. You want to be able to set up Tailwind in your Phoenix project, and we're going to get right into that. Pragmatic Studio came up with this uh, blog post that they've been keeping updated, adding Tailwind CSS to Phoenix 1.6. I've used this tutorial multiple times, and it's an excellent one, and we're essentially going to be going through it in video form and implementing Tailwind CSS in a brand new Phoenix project. There are two main parts to this tutorial. Number one, we're gonna be installing Tailwind into the project, which is a requirement. And then number two, we're gonna be optionally installing SAS into the project. SAS is a CSS preprocessor where this is what normal CSS looks like for creating nav elements with child UL, LI, and A styles. SCSS, or known as SAS, is, makes this a lot easier by being able to nest your CSS. I use it on all my projects. I've used it for the entirety of my career. It is, in my opinion, a far superior technology to CSS, and it's much more intuitive than having to write everything by hand in CSS. So you start off with SAS, you write stuff in SAS, and then it gets processed into a CSS file at uh, production build time. So let's get started with number one, setting up Tailwind. So we start off with a new Phoenix project and the very first thing that we're going to do is install Tailwind. So Tailwind is a library that is maintained by the Phoenix core team. This came out about eight months ago and the reason why this is powerful is because if it's maintained by the Phoenix core team, this is Chris McCord himself doing the last release, you know that this is going to be maintained long term. So we install Tailwind, mixdeps.get. So now we've installed Tailwind. The very next step that we want to do is add our configuration. So we're just essentially walking through this tutorial uh, that was provided by Pragmatic Studio, but we're doing it in video form in case you uh, want to hear the anecdotes for additional context. So after we've installed the Tailwind library, we're going to open up our config file and we're going to install our configuration for Tailwind, which is the following. So this version number right here is the actual Tailwind version. Uh, so if you ever want to upgrade Tailwind, you can target a, a a higher level version and it will automatically install it into your project uh, or it will compile it into your project with that version. So now that we have had it, we have it configured or it won't automatically install it, you have to run this command mix tailwind.install um, which is the, our very next step. So now we've installed Tailwind, we've added our configuration um, and now we're going to Tailwind install. So what it did was it downloaded the version 3.0.24, which was supplied into here, and it's now available into our project. In addition to that, it made the following changes. Uh, it removed the phoenix.css file, added the tailwind into our app.css directory, and it removed the app.css from being called in our app.js. This is already handled, I imagine, by the tailwind library. Um, this is part of the tutorial steps, but you actually don't have to do this because this is already done for you when you run mix tailwind.install. We added this ourselves, we install tailwind, and we are done with the initial step. Uh, the last thing it does is this is the tailwind configuration. This is the basic setup for a tailwind project when you install it uh, via JavaScript, and the tailwind generator generated this for us so we don't actually have to worry about this uh, giving us support for HTML that is in EX files and uh, say we have .eex or if we're using liveview.hex files 
this star.ex allows us uh, allows Tailwind to recognize all the styles that all, all the utility classes that are being used and what it, this allows Tailwind to do is any CSS class that you're not being used it gets stripped from your Tailwind build at production time making sure that your users download a the most thinnest version possible of Tailwind So now we've got Tailwind installed, the next thing we want to do is we want to add live reload support. So every time we save a file, it will, or if we change CSS classes, it will automatically reload our browser with the new CSS styles. At this point, we want to open up the dev.exs file. And in the watcher section, we're going to add a line to this. configuring Tailwind, telling Tailwind to recompile whenever uh, it notices CSS files or any HTML files that need to change. And then finally, we need to go to our mix.exs file and we need to make sure that when we deploy our project, we add the Tailwind step. So what I like to do here is I like to make this multi-line where we've got esbuild, which is our build tool for uh, Phoenix projects. And we're going to add an intermediate step of, hey, build our project, run Tailwind, and then uh, digest our assets. And then now we are actually done, and we're going to display that this is working. So let's open up the page controller that comes standard with Phoenix. And we're going to throw in a CSS class, Tailwind CSS with a text red 500. Let's start our server. So it, we actually get this warning about the get text compiler. It's no longer in use in your mix.exs. That's a really annoying uh, thing that pops up. And all you need to do to get rid of that is your compilers. You need to get rid of the get text because apparently you don't, it's no longer required in your mix.exs file. So we make this an empty list, we restart our server, and we no longer get that error. So let's open up localhost 4000. And we have text red, and because we have live reload, when we actually change this from text red 500 to text blue 500, I'm not gonna save this file, see how it's red. I'm gonna save the file, we're gonna see that it recompiled rebuilding done in 32 milliseconds and now that text is blue and that is the basic version and you are now set up on Tailwind the next step is to install SAS this is an optional step I highly recommend it I use SAS on all my projects it's a better version of CSS it's a preprocessor that I recommend that you take the time to install um, SAS into your project so that you have a better form of writing your CSS so the very next step is that we need to prepare for installing SAS. So we need to go into our app.css, rename this to app.scss. SAS files have a .scss uh, file extension. Oh, so let me see, app.css. Did we already rename it? Okay, yeah, so we deleted it, we renamed it, perfect. Get add dot. And now our next step is to install Dart SAS. So Dart SAS is the library that controls uh, pre-compilation, the pre-compilation step from a SAS file into a CSS file. This is maintained by Michael Crum, who's also on the Phoenix Core team. So you can install this into your project with a lot of confidence because someone who's very invested into the community is in charge of maintaining this project. So we'll install Dart SAS into our mix.exs file. Our next step is to configure Dart SAS. So we're going to open up our config file and add the following lines. Config. Just like we added our configuration for Tailwind, we're going to be configure 
configuring our SaaS version. This is our SaaS version 1.49. And it's essentially going to take our app.scss file and it's going to put it into an intermediate step before it turns into CSS, uh, this app.css.tailwind file. So we add that to our configuration. And then finally, we need to look at our Tailwind configuration and add an intermediate step from going from config, or, or we're going to change the input line. It's not going to come from app.css. Our input into Tailwind is going to come from this intermediate step here, app.css.tailwind, and then it's going to it's going to output into app. into app.css. Our very next step is to actually install SAS. So we've done all these things. So it's going to install SAS. And there actually is no change to our project, which is pretty awesome. And then finally, we are going to add, because we now have an additional step to our build process, we need to tell our watcher uh, that's powering the live reload to run that intermediate step. So we need to open up dev.exs. And we've got ES build, we've got Tailwind, and then we need to add the intermediate step for SAS. So Tailwind, SAS. So now it's going to run all these different things. ES build, Tailwind, and SAS. Finally, we need to go into our mix.exs file and we need to make sure that when assets get built, because remember we now have that intermediate step going from SAS to Tailwind and from Tailwind to CSS. We now need to tell our assets when they deploy to execute SAS. So we add this step here and in our setup step so that when new people install our project, we're gonna update our setup step to include an assets.build. So the reason why we add this, actually let me, let me show you what, why we're gonna add this. So let's restart our server, because whenever we install new Phoenix libraries, we have to restart our server. We run into this issue with Tailwind CSS, and this is going to trip people up when they initially start the project. This is, no, this is noted in detail in the Pragmatic Studio Guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make the life easier for new developers and so we're going to add an assets.build command that everybody who starts our project is going to need to use. So our assets.build command is going to ensure that SAS is installed correctly so that you don't run into that same error when you're starting your server. And so that means our, our setup command, our mix setup command is also going to change to be dependent on that assets.build command. So now we can close our server, run mix setup, which is going to run mix sass.default. Can't find style sheet to import. Oh, so what we needed to do is in our app.scss, these import lines need to become at tailwind lines. So let's jump into that. Those three lines become the following. So we run mix setup. Everything runs. And then now we want to display that SAS is working. So we're going to add some SAS styles to our app.scss, which are the following. We have a card with a parent title and a description. And then we're going to add this. We're going to add some HTML to our page to confirm that it works as intended. So let's add these some divs that have some special styling to confirm that SAS is going to work. So you see the card class, title, and description class, which are de defined here with a, a dot card that has a child title and a child description. We uh, refresh, or we don't have to refresh our page because uh, live reload already works. So let's go to localhost 4000. 
and we see that we have our styles in place. SAS is working. We now have Tailwind and SAS installed. Congratulations, you are using the best CSS framework on the planet for developers. Someone who values productivity over beauty, uh, this is the perfect library for someone like myself.